Good morning, um, ministers and ladies and gentlemen. Let me just echo um, Colette's introduction and welcome all of you to the Oil and Gas Technology Centre. Um, this is a, a very important day um, for us. The official launch of what we hope and believe will become a major global centre for offshore oil and gas technology development, particularly in subsea, uh, mature field assets and decommissioning, and which will, of course, have a major impact on our industry and the economy of our region and country. Can I begin by warmly uh, welcoming uh, Lord Dunlop, UK Under Secretary of State for Scotland and Northern Ireland, who over the past, I guess, two or three years has been a huge active supporter of the oil and gas industry and certainly of this project, um, and to Paul uh, Wheelhouse, Scottish Minister for Business, um, Innovation and Energy, who likewise has shown real interest in the, uh, in the progress. I'm also delighted to um, welcome Ian Constance, um, Chief Executive of the Advanced Propulsion Centre in Coventry, who is our keynote speaker. And he's going to tell us how he and his team are driving innovation in the UK automotive industry. Let me begin by reflecting on how we got here. As Europe's offshore oil and gas capital, our region had a strong reputation from the past in technology innovation. This can be traced back to the 1970s when the UK North Sea led the world in the development of what was then ultra deep water engineering. Um, major US contractors such as Brown Root and McDermott were driving these developments few local companies involved, some but not many. And I well remember the, the TV coverage of the installation of the first BP 40s jacket. And just at the time the, the barge was tilting to deliver the first leg of the platform to the seabed, the camera shifted to the legendary Matt Linning and the senior BP and contractor managers who were all lined up on a, an observation barge. As the TV camera went along the line, it initially focused on their faces, but a perceptive cameraman noticed something and quickly shifted his camera angle. Every single one of them was standing with fingers crossed. Um, and that was true pioneering. That really was true pioneering innovation with enterprise technology and um, risk very much involved. So we're now 40 years on where are we in technology development? Well, the positive, in the last 25 years, we've made real progress in subsea engineering and are now undoubtedly a worldwide centre of excellence where the global market is forecast to more than double by 2035. However, have we really kept pace with technology developments in some other sectors? The $100 oil price, frankly, made it all too easy and provided little incentive to invest and take the risk to develop new technology, new approaches and new methods. The result is when we hit this uh, downturn, our conservative technology base and mindset has not served us well and certainly is now prejudicing our MER aspirations. One result is frustration in our supply chain, keen to develop new technology to grow their differentiation but in many cases unable to get the new technologies deployed and introduced to the market. So the challenge 40 years ago was the engineering of major offshore field developments. The challenge now is to significantly accelerate our mature field recovery technology to get us somewhere close to the 20 billion barrels of oil equivalent, which frankly right now is looking very challenging. Let me correct a, a common misconception we had the, the First Minister here on Wednesday and, and she said her biggest problem is disabusing people of the view that North Sea oil is on the way out. Uh, and that was actually a very helpful um, acknowledgement from her that that was a, a real misconception. I mean we all know nothing could be further um, from the truth. And this new technology centre is all about maximising recovery over a long active um, period. Yes, we have an eventual depletion challenge, but we have many years of maximising recovery, always with the prospect of a significant new discovery. I mean, just look at Statoil's Johannes Ferdrop. There's still some clear potential west of Shetland. I suspect there's some exciting prospects in the next licensing round with all the work that's been done on the, um, on the spec um, 
seismic. And the Central North Sea has still got a lot left there with the HPHT reservoirs. And frankly, just how much we eventually recover is in our hands. And I don't mean in our hands as the te this technology centre. We will accept, shoulder our clear responsibility. But in the hands of, um, I suspect, everyone in this room and a much wider industry. It's frankly up to us. There's another important um, impact of the technology centre. Europe's offshore oil capital has been built up and successfully focused on operations and services. Um, this new centre will provide the strong technology development mindset and base that will play a significant role in keeping um, our supply chain here and establishing this re region as a long-term indigenous offshore oil and gas technology base. When Opportunity Northeast, or one, was set up 18 months ago, innovation was top of our um, agenda, and in particular the possibility of creating a major um, oil and gas technology centre for the region. Some work had been done before that, which we took over. So working with the two national and local governments, with Scottish Enterprise, the two universities, and a great effort from the Opportunity Northeast team, we managed to secure through the city region deal the 180 million pounds of funding, um, which with the matched funding requirement provides over 350 million pounds of um, investment over the next decade. This will only succeed with the full backing and involvement from the OGA, from the operators, from the supply chain, and the other people involved in the industry. But we have a good start. Courtesy of the Technology Leadership Board, we were able to start with the North Sea's clear technology development um, priorities. And that's one of the real strengths. We will be working alongside industry. It won't be industry over the wall. It'll be industry and ourselves on the same side of the wall, working together continually, looking at these priorities, identifying the projects from the um, from the priorities and working together to um, deliver the, uh, the um, solutions. And, and Colette will tell you a bit about the solution centres. Our solution centres each will, ma will, will match up with one of the priority um, areas. Learning from other industries and understanding how they have overcome similar challenges will be very important um, to our success. Um, two great examples <coughs> are the automotive and the aviation industries. They each provide pretty spectacular success stories, and we will try and maximise our learning here. So, what, 30 years ago, under severe competitive pressure, and frankly in the case of automotive facing extinction in the UK, these sectors each managed to completely transform the way they were organised and the way they worked together, uh, and their whole approach to um, collaboration across the industry and developing new um, technology. Uh, and that clearly caught government's attention, and they then came up with um, really very significant research and development funding. Catapults appeared, the local universities got involved, and the result is a total transformation into two internationally competitive UK leading industries, both playing a very important part in the UK's uh, economy. So shortly, um, Ian Constance will tell us the story of the transformation within the automotive sector and the role that collaboration and technology has played. Over the next few years, we must emulate um, these examples, with the primary objective being fairly quickly demonstrating significant benefits for our industry, and thus for the UK economy. For the last 20 years, um, the offshore oil and gas industry has received less than 1% of the total UK government spend on research and development. With some success, we should be able to go to government, who now clearly focused on more innovation, and also, more recently, on the UK industrial strategy, to get much more significant long-term R&D funding, with the aim of establishing the UK as a major worldwide centre for mature base and technology, um, based on the next generation of solutions, not just doing things better, but doing things differently. And we obviously must take more account of the environmental challenges. The speed with which we have taken this oil and gas technology centre from concept to business case development and now launched very much as a standalone organisation 
is actually pretty impressive. But this is matched by the speed with which Colette uh, and her colleagues have pulled together. Um, there's a very strong team. Um, she will tell you a lot more about this shortly. Um, but there's actually some really quite exciting things um, happening. And it is um, moving ahead um, very quickly. So on behalf of the board, um, I'm going to thank Colette and all her team. I need to tell you you're just beginning, but you've made a very good beginning. Um, there's a lot of hard work ahead, but thank you very much for the excellent um, progress. So <clears throat> let me finish with an industry challenge. I quite like challenging the industry. I'm, I'm no longer directly involved, so I'm allowed the luxury of issuing challenges now and again. So <clears throat> we're now at a key stage um, in the North Sea oil story. We've frankly come through, not totally through, but we're, we're moving through a fairly long mid-maturity production period, what I'm going to call the head down phase. $100 oil, no real incentive to significantly improve our efficiency and technology, or even consider the possibility of collaboration. <coughs> My MER UK report spelt out the challenges. Frankly, I wasn't very clever. I just listened, and it was a very consistent message. And what I did was reflected that consistent message, which, which inevitably had the um, backing of industry because they had given me the message um, and of government. <coughs> The last two years, we've been in a survival phase. We're now hopefully beginning to see some daylight towards the recovery stage, but it's going to be gradual and slow. I don't think we'll see any significant increase in investment in the current year, but hopefully into 2018-19 we will. And in four to five years' time, our industry, significantly more efficient and effective after the downturn, with guidance and stimulation from OGA and with some help from this um, centre, must achieve the performance of a global leader in mature fuel recovery, subsea and decommissioning. We all have lots to do. We mustn't uh, let things slide back to the bad habits uh, in the old ways. A number of very positive things have happened. We've changed a lot in the last two years, so our focus must now be on continuous improvement every year. Um, I'm in no doubt we can get closer to 20 billion barrels of recovery, but only if we, the industry, working closely with OGA and with the Technology Centre and others, get it right. So, this is the end of the um, beginning. Um, I'm never sure about events like this. I kind of, I, I kind of worry um, on the expectation. There's a very high expectation on um, the centre, and 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 rightly so. Um, we do recognise the challenges ahead. Um, we have got serious funding. We have got a really good team. And with your help and involvement, we will um, deliver. Um, thank you all very much for being here to support our launching. So we're now going to hear from um, Ian Constance. Um, I'm sorry, Ian's there. I'm looking at Ian, Ian Constance, I'm Chief Executive of the Advanced Propulsion Centre, telling us how the automotive, automotive industry achieved its transformation. He will just be followed on by um, Lord Dunlop from the Scotland office, and then Paul Wheelhouse from the Scottish Government, and then the two ministers will jointly perform the opening ceremony, and finally um, Colette will set out her team's ambitions, priorities and plans for the future. So, can I pass you over to Ian Constance.